making sure everybody can see me. What's good, ladies and gentlemen? We got a good one tonight. We got the brother phase one coming in. And we're going to do a lot of, you know, breaking down of the timeline of eschatology and things of that nature. We're also going to do a Q&A at the end of the broadcast. But we're right now waiting on the brother phase one to come in. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Okay, perfect. But we waiting on the brother phase one, but I'm going to get the intro going here right now until he comes in. We still waiting on the brother phase one, but until he comes in, if you guys got some questions or whatever, we can get that started off. Let me get the comment section going. So we waiting on the brother phase one to show up. And then, like I said, if you guys got some questions during the course of the show, We'll definitely have to tap into, you know, answer your questions according to the new heaven and the new earth and the pole shift and things of that nature. Well. So where does Satan and so where is Satan cannot go when he sends a woman? I'm not sure what you mean by that question, brother. You got to give an extensive uh, synopsis when you want to break that down. But I'm not seeing the brother come in yet. Let's see. But as far as, you know, um, uh, as far as this bill that we're going to be touching on tonight, like I said, it's based on a prophetic divin divination, and we're going to be demonstrating the esoteric aspects of a new heaven and a new earth. That's what this whole broadcast is basically about. We're going to be breaking down, you know, uh, the magnetic pole shift and how it's connected to the etheric frequency of the planet when you're talking about uh, the metamorphosis of the pole shift and things of that nature. So that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. And we're also going to be broadcasting his book that he wants us to, uh, that he wants the great majority of the masses to touch in on because the brother, he's wrote like 10 books already. So we're going to uh, touch on all that stuff tonight as well. Wow. I'm trying to slow down. That's a lot of questions coming in. So. As far as the chosen, as far as the chosen uh, during this time period, like I said, the year 2024 is actually the year eight. And the year eight 
is basically the symbology of building and destroying. So as a as the collective of the 144,000, which equates to the nine ether genetical properties or whatever, we should be connected on the fact of a form of unity consciousness. That should be the foundation, the uh, foundational vibrational frequency of us, you know, building a collective, you know, unity consciousness is the only thing that can combat the energy of the people who brought a negative polarity to the planet who was doing the work of the archons. So as far as the chosen, yes, phase is late. But from what, a, I don't know if we can, if I'm going to have to build on it myself or what, which is fine. But let me see. As far as. Yeah, let me get get some questions going. So until he comes in, you know, backstage, that way we can, you know, keep the flow of the energy going on as far as the information. I didn't mean to show that. Hold on, we got the brother phase one backstage right now. Bro, back. Peace, brother. Peace. Um, yeah, you late, man. <laughs> it's all good, but we still gonna get the transmission out. Um, mm -hmm. Let me get these, uh, cause this is my first time using uh, StreamYard, so I'm kind of winging it as I go. Right. So uh, let me get, let me get your banner and everything going. Uh, anybody who want to donate to the brother, his uh, cash app is pray for change. Yeah, play for change. Um, the brother he wrote like ten different books, and the book is actually acclimated to whatever we're talking about: the new heaven and the new earth, Revelation chapter twenty-one, verse one. So yeah. all these things is working in symbiotic connection. When you're talking about the green ethereal energy, the chosen ones, uh, new heaven, new earth, all these things is acclimated to the metamorphic shift of the planet so uh he's also uh, he has a um um a fund the 144,000 fund and he's trying to build up these funds in order to create you know many different illustrations and projects to bring about this truth to the planet so ladies and gentlemen uh you got phase one um he's been doing the work of the master teacher dr malachi z york l He's been doing it for a long time since he was 16, you know, probably even before then. So, I mean, everybody pretty much know who he is. I mean, he makes really good music. It's connected to, like I said, it's pro connected to prophetic divination. It's connected to, you know, an esoteric aspect. He, he does a lot of breakdowns and everything. So please, you know what I'm saying, donate to this brother's cash app because he's doing something, you know, edifying for the planet because it's needed. Because in order to combat uh, the negative polarity of the planet. It all starts with the music and it all starts with the edification, not just acclimated to the music, but the history and the historical aspect, the spiritual and the historical aspect of it also. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you phase one. Bro, we're back. Peace, what's going on? Let's get into it. How you okay. feel, man? Let's go. So, uh, as I was, I uh, went through your book, and and it has something about the music right as far as like the r b music and things of that nature mm -hmm. so this part right here while i was reading it, it was basically saying that the music has a has the ability to bring a positive polarity to create this you know this uh this metamorphic shift on the planet as you're talking about a new heaven and new earth. Can right. you expound on the love frequency of the music and how it's really important to mm. uh, reverse the polarity of the evil negative nature in the disagreeable nature of the Canaanite 
and the people who control the, the music industry and things of that nature. Could you expound on that and how it works in connection with New Heaven and New Earth? Exactly. If you want to know where a people are, if you want to understand who a people are, what they're going through, where they might be going, just listen to whatever that music is. Whatever that music is at that time is going to tell you what the resonance of the people is not going to lie. This is one of those things where you could be listening to a song, even if you don't want to take in the information of that song, unless your psychic self-defense is set up to intentionally block out those frequencies from getting into the brain, you will start altering as far as your actual molecular structure. You can get what people call goosebumps and your cells will start responding to the music, right? You'll actually start nodding to the music, which is a subconscious reaction to say, I agree with whatever this message is. So you start literally moving and saying, whatever this is, is reflective of me and I'm reflective of it. So that's just with the tones and things that are happening outside of the body. Now, there's a, a actual beat that comes with us as human beings it's called our heartbeat, mm -hmm. right? And that's why we have certain people like the ones we refer to as the melanin dominant people that are tied to the rhythm of the land, right? They say that we dance a certain way, we move a certain way. It didn't have anything to do with just soul music or how we dance. It also has something to do with because of the melanin dominant gene being present, certain people that possess that gene were going to be able to interpret information on a whole different level, not to say necessarily a better level, but on a different level. Everybody's having their own individual experience, but because of that synchronicity that comes with that melanin dominant gene being present, mm -hmm. if they were to all get on one accord, right? Listen to that key word, one accord, mm -hmm. or one rope, or one line, like Al-Quran said, what? Hold on to the rope, or hold fast to the rope of Allah, and see to it that you are not divided. And it's very important to remember that they say, hold on all together. Okay, so if everybody were to get on one accord to connect with each other, like I spoke of in the book, How to Love Again, right? Mm -hmm. Then this convergence that would take place, it doesn't have to be just melanin dominant. That's just an example. But the convergence that will take place will create not only a sound, but a reality that comes with that sound. So the same way they're affected by the environmental tones and tones around them, the environment itself, which is the world or the realm you're in, will be affected by your inner tone coming outward. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the love frequency is is more based on the intention of your music. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? If you, now as a musician, and other musicians may relate to this, you already understand what your intention is of your music before you write a song. Mm -hmm. You set an intention, say, I, I, I feel like this, I want to make a love song. Or mm -hmm. I want to make a, 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 a rap song that's, that's, that's hype, get people jumping in the club and shit. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, you set an intention and you put the works together to form whatever the reality is. So then your players say, listen to this. And if somebody listening to your song and it's supposed to be a deep story song, but they dance it around, so something went wrong. Right. <laughs> you know I mean? so it's, it's supposed to be something to get people to dance. And they're like, yo, I'm, I'm not feeling this. Something went wrong. So the intention has to match whatever that output is. You understand? Mm -hmm. Once you set an intention, you match it with the output, which means that the, the correct works would have had to have been commence as far as getting the, the, the project done in order to yield the reality that you will be looking for that will be most fruitful or most favorable. So if people wanted love to exist, think about it. What will happen if you play Knuck If You Buck as opposed to uh, uh, Before I Let You Go? You know what I'm saying? Right. Go. You know what I'm saying? It's, mm -hmm. There are two different realities that are going to happen with the groups of people, masses of people, like they showed you in the They Clone Tyrone movie. Right. There, mm -hmm. were, there are ways that people are using music to affect whole projects. Now, I'm saying that on purpose, because when you call the hood <laughs> projects, that's a reason they're calling it that, because mm -hmm. they're experimenting and they're working on certain things and they're doing exactly what they're doing in the movies, testing these frequencies out, using the radio, using the other rappers or artists or musicians or magicians. All right. And using their works to, to affect what's happening in people's realities. So if you want love music, then you make music with the intention of having a love response. Are you with me? It is the same thing that you would do with the music instruments. You would do that same thing with each other. You know what I mean? So the music is just to say that there's some type of rhythm taking place. There's a vibration present. There's an intention present. There's an input and output present. You understand? And then mm -hmm. there's, another, there's a demographic or a targeted audience that's present, whether it's for this person, that person, those people over there, or all of the people. You understand? So when people like Michael Jackson were coming out with music that said, heal the world, he wasn't speaking in terms of the melanin dominant or the melanin recessive alone. You understand? It's just that at that time, there were a lot of melanin recessive people, especially in the days of the 60s and 70s, where they were being pushed to be 
you know what I'm saying, whether it was because of the inferiority complex or whatever it was for, they were being pushed to be demonic or devilish. You understand? And to be racist and prejudiced toward people just because of their resonance. So that has changed over time. It's just that you have to ask yourself, are people, period, operating off that love or that care frequency or tone already? And if they are, then that intention is already set. Then the works have to commence. When you get into what we spoke about with the 144,000, that mm -hmm. only the 144,000, only the people that were on that frequency could learn the song of the 144,000. They said they had to be redeemed from the earth or brought out of Eretz mm -hmm. or Edom or Adama of the darkness. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that love song comes from obviously within, but it's a place that is within that is purified. Okay? It's the utopia. Because when you say utopia, you say autopia. Mm -hmm. right? Auto itself and pia, pious or piety is speaking about purification. So self-purification allows for the emission of purity. That's why the throat chakra uh, color blue is associated with the word vishuddha. And mm -hmm. vishuddha means purity. Are you with me? And those who were able to tune themselves up to that point on top of that Mount Zion like they spoke of in Baclo Tyrone, they say, how do you get out of Babylon? Where do you go when you want to get out of Babylon? And they showed Mount Zion as a church, you understand? Which was a place that's called heaven, but also referred to as Mount Zion, medically in the book of Revelation chapter 14. All of the ones who were able to tune themselves up were able to release a pure sound. And that sound was of redemption. Meaning it wasn't that they didn't, they never failed or they never transgressed or they never sinned or they never had hate or they never did any of the things that would have violated the 42 principles or confessions. It's not that they never did those things, it's that they were able to redeem themselves from the weight or the darkness that came with it. Correct. So yeah. that's how you know that the, you know, uh, the foundation of their system is based on frequency warfare. Mm -hmm. Because they know that as far as the music, only words from the heart can reach the heart. So when you understand comedic mythology, some say that the heart is actually the seat of the soul. So with that being said, when you understand neurocardiology and cardio electromagnetic communication, that works in symbiotic connection through the principles of the laws in my yacht when the heart has to be synced with the mind in order to absorb that etheric cord or the ether that leaves an energetic imprint on the universe as far as the unity conscious aspect. So when you're talking about the music, the music that you bring to the table or the love frequency of R&B is the only thing that can combat the energy of these uh, these boule um, societal, you know, type of R&B artists. I mean, not R&B artists, but rap artists and things of that nature. So that's, you know, that's on point, brother. So the music is only it's, it's interesting that they call it rhythm and blues because mm -hmm. the brother Andre came out with a new blue sun. Right. And the blue is up all about the throat chakra and your, your ability to be an orator or to speak new life into a realm. Blue, mm -hmm. they call it rhythm and blues. I just want to point that out because mm -hmm. even the ones who came out with the song, Wake Up Everybody was Harold Melvin and uh, the Blue Notes. Facts. Blue. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to point that out real quick. And then if you, you it, it, even when you look at the esoteric aspect of the movie, um, uh, the, the TV series, uh, The Man Who Fell to Earth, m notice the older guy at the, end of the, at the end of the show, in order to combat and to reverse the polarity of certain things that was happening on the planet, he used the music notes, the music notes, the instruments. Because like I said, the word instrument, the word mental is in there for a reason because it works in symbiotic connection with the mental faculties of the carbonated body as you have these etheric frequencies coming in, the green light. Yep. So that's when it's connected to the magnetites and the dendrites of the brain, which produces more neurons in the brain. So when you tap into the love frequency, that's when you type into uh, the Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. So that's the return of the uh, of the Christ consciousness or the Christ body as as you have in a metamorphic shift on the planet when you're talking about a new heaven and a new earth. So right. it all correlates to it, you know, corresponds with each other. Exactly. So, uh, also, I've seen in your book. But ladies and gentlemen, y'all really got to get this brother's book because there's a lot of good information in this book. Drops a lot, of, a lot of knowledge talking about the love frequency. So I was looking at this here and it was talking about uh, just basically the chakra system and how it connects with, you know, uh, the heavens and things of that nature. So can you expound on this when you were talking about as far as uh, and how it works in connection with a new heaven, a new earth in the heavens and Zion? What do, you, what do you mean? I'm trying to figure out what you're asking. 
No, I'm saying, can you expound on the uh, as far as like the chakra system, the color spectrum, mm -hmm. as far as, uh, how it works in connection with the new heaven and new earth? Absolutely. <clears throat> so you have your seven points, all right, mm -hmm. that most people are familiar with when it comes to the chakras. All right, so most people say you got the root chakra, the sacral, total plexus, your heart, your throat, your third eye, all the way up to the crown, right? So that's seven points that most people are familiar with. I went and broke down in that same book that you have to look at it. Like, even when you say root chakra, mm -hmm. the root can't just be the root. There has to be something that the root is was referred to as more to. You understand? So that red or that death shirt is more to the black. You understand? Mm -hmm. And as you get up there to that violet, which is that V and that Roy G. Biv, you have something that comes after that, which is beyond violet or ultraviolet, which really should show up as white. You understand? Mm -hmm. So from your black to your white, you have your one, all right, all the way up to the nine, and you count the seven in between, which is your Roy G. Biv. Those mm -hmm. steps or levels are referred to, even in El Quran, they speak of the seven heavens, all right, mm -hmm. that Allah created. Okay, uh, in Hinduism, they speak about seven worlds or seven lokas, the lower lokas beneath you or the naraka. They speak of it to be seven levels. Okay, so this number seven appears often as a breakdown of the levels between worlds before it goes into a, a newer reality or a new world. So if you were to start from the Adama, which you go to the book of Genesis chapter two, verse seven, right? Which two plus seven equals nine. Don't forget that. Genesis 2 7 was speaking about how whoever these ascended masters were, these lords or Yahweh's were, who formed Adam out of the dust of the ground, all right, they made him as a clay formation, like it spoke about in El Quran, right? Where you had Iblis who was challenging this new creation of beings, said they were formed out of clay, all right, which was a very dense molecular structure, as opposed to the fire that he claimed he was formed out of. You understand? So they formed Adam. Let's look at that word, Adam. Adam or Adama was literally saying the ground. You understand? And if you were to look at what that ground was and what that soil chopper was for that black, it's saying they were being formed out of the darkness, built up out of the darkness. And they had to breathe into them. This is what they literally said in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. They breathed into them the ruh, which is the mm -hmm. spirit, right? And then they became a living soul, which meant that there was a process of man coming from darkness into the light because that living soul gave you the word life, all right, or Eve which was Hawa, okay? Mm -hmm. So these points that you had leading up from the darkness to the light gave you seven points in between or seven steps in between or seven walks or layers mm -hmm. in between, all right? When you get to that G that's in Roy G. Biff and mm -hmm. you have a center, okay? And that center, which is why we're doing the green light movement right now, Project Green Town, because that's what we're supposed to be at at this point. Exactly. In that center, which is that crossroad, all right, that G represents that same key, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is that, literal k-e-y but literal also k-i or q-i which meant vital energy or chi as the monks call it all right mm -hmm. the vital energy that had to be moving through your body as a conductor that electrified you that allowed you to continue on as you'll read in this book as you continue on from a lower concentration to a higher concentration it takes more energy to get up there a lot of people think that you take a deep breath and just because you took that deep breath, now you can just squeeze your thing and you just send energy up. No, you have to focus more as the energy traveled up your spine, which means it takes more energy to conduct that focus. Literally, listen to why I'm saying it. Conduct that focus. So what's the point? As we said in the maxim, or it was said in the maxim by Pythagoras, man, know thyself, and you will be able to understand all of the things that are happening outside of you with the celestials or Shama'in, okay, or the universe beyond you. This means that the way you have the seven points inside of you that operate in this reality, you also have the seven virtuous points or the seven dimensional points of the realm outside of you. You mm -hmm. understand? So it's operating the same way. And as long as or so long as you know about the black to the white and everything in between, then you know that the black represents darkness. OK, and all the way up to the white is speaking about whoever has the utmost information. OK, or the most information to be able to guide around into mm -hmm. life. You understand? So look at it. You had a being called Moses, mm -hmm. all right, who appeared as Musa in El Quran. Okay, it's the same thing, it's just phonetically different, the language is different. But Musa, Moses, what did it mean? It means to be drawn out of the water, to be poured out of the water. What, what are we speaking about? Moses was associated with a specific body of water. What body of water was that? It was the Red Sea. Right. You understand? Okay, there's a color associated with that sea. 
red, which means that whatever C it was, was associated right there with that color of the Desher, okay, that was connected to the black in ancient Kemet or Ken, okay? So we have a color, red. Then we have another C that was near the Red Sea. What sea was that? The Mediterranean Sea. Okay, so listen to it. You have the Red Sea. But look at this same diagram that appears on the screen right now. All right. As you see, the red fades over to the left toward the black. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have that Red Sea. You have to travel through all these different loops or cycles, all right, or wheels, as what chakra means, wheels, to get to the point of the crossroad, which is that green right there at mm. about 500 nanometers. Okay. okay. You have your green sitting right there that you have to travel through. All right. So you had this man named Moses. Yeah who had this staff, okay, which was a wand. And they said, with this staff, all right, or with this scepter, or with this wand, you will work many wanders, okay? Mm. That staff is representative of the spine, okay? And remember that the spine is a conductor. The wand is a conductor. The iron rod is a conductor. So anybody who came up under the knowledge of Musa, who at one point in time was confessing or professing to be the most knowledgeable man on the planet, mm. okay, according to the scriptures. OK, but then he was challenged by Allah himself because people ask him, they say, yo, Musa, who is the one with the most knowledge on earth? Mm -hmm. And Musa said, I am. All right. And Allah called Al Alim, the knowing one <laughs> or all knowing one, said, no, you're not. He said, what? He said, where you, where you get that from? What made you think that you were the most knowledgeable person on the planet? And it wasn't that he was speaking in arrogance. It was because per his own knowledge, nobody else had had access to the types of degrees that he had reached to be able to bring people to tablets or the pillars or the Ten Commandments or all these other things. So he said, you have to meet somebody else. Okay, there's somebody I want you to meet. And who was that? A brother by the name of al Qadir or Kiddir, all mm -hmm. right? And he had to meet him at the junction of the two seas, okay? Or the junction of the two rivers, all right? That's why they have a book called Where the Two Seas Meet. Everybody needs to go and get that book, okay? So when he went to go meet this being called al Qadir, all right? They say that it was from the Red Sea, yeah. Mediterranean Sea, that this meeting took place. So here you can see where the chakras align in your real world and in a real story. Because the word Mediterranean is saying what? Meta is middle. Mm -hmm. all right? And Terranean is to say earth or land. Okay? So the middle of your earth plane, all right, is where the Red Sea and the Green Sea meet. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you know what we're referring to as the green one? Because Kadir meant green one. Mm. Are you with me? So mm -hmm. you had Moses able to part the Red Sea. He had all the knowledge of the Sophia realm of the Demiurge world. He had all the knowledge of the lower worlds of the Baphomet wisdom and all of that. He had everything that he swore he knew everything there was to know. Okay, he was the most knowledgeable being that existed within these planes until he had to go and meet somebody at the mental plane or the Mediterranean plane or the middle plane, okay, which was the green plane. And that's where the two seas meet. So watch this. In the beginning, <laughs> mm -hmm. okay, in the book of Genesis, they had water. They said water was all over the planet. And they had to separate that water using a rakia or a firmament. Okay? Mm -hmm. They separated the older waters from the newer waters or the inner waters from the outer waters. Are you with me? I'm using the keyword water for a reason. You actually mm -hmm. found the word to home, which meant a deep, which was speaking about the depth of the plane itself. You understand? Mm -hmm. So when they separated the realms from each other and placed what was called a vault or a firmament which was described as molten mirror glass. That's mm -hmm. the texture they said and how it appeared, which was speaking about a portal, by the way, because if you look in the river, it's a mirror. You understand? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that it's hard, which a lot of people think, Brachia, they think, oh, it must be hard. No, they said it was like molten mirror. And if you speak about a molten mirror, you go watch movies like Through the Looking Glass or watch the Matrix Resurrections movie, and you will see that they were able to move through these mirrors. Okay, which was a portal, which means whoever was granted access was able to pass through, like Alice in the Wonderland, which was through the looking glass. You understand? So when they separated these two bodies of water, the water that was in your reality was representative of one of those seas. Okay, which meant that attached to that sea was an earth called Eryx. Remember, they had to form the earth because in the beginning, the earth was without form. It was void and without form. It didn't mean that there was nothing here. There was no planet here. It meant that the word Eryx, okay, was bringing forth the science of the land itself. It was bringing forth the science of the land masses, whether you want to call it Pangaea, whatever you want to call it. It wasn't speaking about the whole earth plane. So they had to form Eryx that was connected to whatever that water was or that body of water was in this demi-urge world Okay, or this lower plane, or this material plane, or nested round, 
that you existed in now. So people saying it right now, you can't go beyond the firmament, right? Not that they tested it themselves, but they still are saying that you can't go beyond the firmament. So if you can't go beyond the firmament, if this is something that you agree with, then that firmament would be your heaven. Mm. You can't go anywhere beyond that, that heaven. Does that mean that that's what heaven is? No, it just means to a human, listen, that's the farthest you can go. And you haven't been granted passage or the rite of passage, all right? Or you haven't picked up that pen to be able to write a passage. You may not have the passwords or you don't have the sword itself or the key itself to get beyond those vaults. It's the reason why the firmament translates to vault. It's locked. You mm -hmm. understand? So somebody had to be able to help you through. So when Musa or Moses was walking with al Qadir, okay, Qadir explained him the rules. He said, yeah, you can walk with me, but you can't ask me anything unless I bring it up to you first. You can't challenge anything I'm, I'm giving you because I'm going to be standing between the world that you would have even had thought about. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to, I'm an interdimensional being. So I don't look at murder how you look at murder. I might sink a ship full of people and you're going to question and challenge me, but you don't know that on that boat was Hitler. You know what I'm saying? And I sink this boat and you trying to figure out it and you want to challenge and fight me. So there was certain rules that he had to lay out so that Musa would understand for one. All right, this is a higher degree of information. However, could there still let it be known that Moses was a knowledgeable being or a Nebi, okay, but he was given information that Kadir wasn't given, and Kadir was given information that he wasn't given. This mm -hmm. is in the story. Are you with me? Yeah, so I'm watch this. Watch this. Do we know what's beyond the observable universe? It's, it's not a trick question. The answer is no, they call it dark matter. Now, does it mean that it's dark? No. It just means that beyond that vault, you don't know what's out there or in there. Mm -hmm. You understand it? So if human ends, listen, can only go but so far up, then that means from the ground all the way up to the heart chakra, that is your earth, Eretz, ground, black soil, all the way up to the green. Okay, that's the heaven, the highest that human beings are able to go at this moment. Mm -hmm. All right? Look at this word, hum. All right? Hum. Go look up what the word hum means. And you will find that it means ground. I'm not making it up. Mm -hmm. Hum means ground. All right, Bidel, what does I mean? It means sky. Okay. Are you with me? So no, say human, uh, man, human is saying from the ground to the sky. Mm. Are you with me? And unless you've been given that key or that spirit, I'm saying it on purpose because Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, all right, then you haven't been permitted to leave this realm. You haven't gone past that crossroad. Mm -hmm. All right, to be able to get up there with Eve to become a superhuman when you go beyond superhuman mm -hmm. is his ability to travel. Right. Are you understand what I'm saying? So look at the word hum, human, and say ground. Well, what else do you mean we say ground? Ground deals with electricity also. Okay. So again, you're a conductor or elect 144,000. Your job is to be redeemed and taken from the earth plane. That's everything that you can see. Go study Sufi cosmology of the Nesut round, the Melakut round, the Jadabut round, okay, the Lahut round. Go study it. It's in different vaults and different places and planes that you have to be able to travel through, but that's only in your earth realm. So when you're saying heavens, to you, that's heaven. But to an ascended master who's past the earth plane, okay, that is earth to them. The top of the vault is earth to an ascended master. What you got for me? So do you kind of equate that through the doctrine of signatures when it comes to the uh, the genetical structure of those who don't have uh, the energetic frequency in the biological structure to ascend past the uh, earth plane. So when you're talking about um, uh, Yakub's grafted devil, when you're mm -hmm. talking about stopping at 33 degrees, that is connected to the, uh, the 33rd vertebrae. So is that also in connection to the fact that you have to have a certain frequ frequency bandwidth in order to travel so the celestial seas so is exactly. that what exactly that's why in order for you to become like christ and to ascend he said you must be born again all right mm -hmm. a lot of people are under the impression that adults have 33 vertebrae they don't by the time you become an adult your mm -hmm. vertebrae has condensed okay they condensed to being about 26 to 24 go look it up so yeah. being born again says that when you're coming into the realm as a newborn you have 33 vertebrae you know what I'm saying? Or 33 mm -hmm. degrees accessible to you. That's why the youth are coming in with all this information. You know what I'm saying? The children can teach you more about who you are, or you can look at the children and remember who you are when at one point you had your innocence active. All right? And mm -hmm. if you say the kingdom of God is within you, 
then if you can't sense what is in you and you don't have an inner sense, then how are you going to ascend? Okay, that's why they wanted to make sure everybody's core, which is your heart, was ruptured, which is why I say core rupt, core ruptured. Okay, mm. they wanted to corrupt everybody, and you had messengers like Rasulullah, okay, Muhammad, who was saying he was praiseworthy. He was worthy of praise. He was not just a human being at that point. Okay, he had ascended. He had the meeting on a mountain and was able to receive these pieces of information and go back. And even though he said he was unlettered, all right, and couldn't read it, he had to be able to still receive that information to be able to give it as a recitation. And this Muhammad being was able to be taken by whoever these other angels were, and they had his heart open. Mm. They performed surgery on him. They opened his heart, okay, or his chest, took his heart out, and then they cleaned it of, guess what, blackness. They said, this portion is shaitan's portion. What do they mean by that? This means that you're either going to operate in insolence or innocence, mm -hmm. all right? You're going to be one of the ones who think that everything is about what you see, the visual ones, or you're going to look into your visceral essence and say it's more about the reason than just the logic or the logos of what it appears to be. So that's what I mean by this is Shaitan's portion, meaning this is the opposite's portion. This is the opposer's portion, something that'll make you oppose what we say when we bring forth the light mm. or the true light. You understand? And then they sealed him back up and sent him out. He was able to receive and carry out the works of a light worker because of that. Okay? So in your own self, you know whether or not you're walking around here not with only the true light, okay, but the true sound. Medica, you brought forth right knowledge. Most people may not even know that right knowledge was being spoken about in El Quran. Mm -hmm. You understand? That the right knowledge is what Kadir came with. And it shouldn't confuse people why Medica York was shown or portrayed with the green light. Because in all aspects, he was operating as Kadir in your modern day time. Right. You understand? So once you receive right knowledge and true light and true sound, there's another thing, you got the true sound, okay, then you're ready to go home. Okay, so even if Yakub would have grafted and created a certain specific group of beings and these people over here were supposed to be gods, if you're operating in a world of degenerates, okay, mm -hmm. and trying to follow their law and trying to take on their ways as your own and take on their music as your own or their keys or their tones as your own, then you could be as much of a god as you thought you were naturally born to be. You can still be diminished. OK, and even so, if you were born into a world of demons and devilishment and you were supposed to be a destroyer, but somebody brought you over to a world of healing and brought you greater lights. OK, a true lights like the people from the NOI. They, anybody can speak that's been a part of the NOI. They know that somebody woke them up from the sleep and brought them into the life. Mm -hmm. OK, sleep was interpreted as or translated as death in the story of Lazarus. You understand? They brought them out of the death or the darkness into the light. So you could, it's, it, either way, you could be in a, a, a dark place and brought to the light, or you could be in the light and brought to the dark. Mm. It's all about concentration. That's why science gives you that actual science of higher concentration to lower concentration is easier. You, it's easier for you to fall. Disobedience is made fair seeming. That's it blitzes science. And it's harder for you and more challenging or difficult for you to go from a lower concentration to a higher concentration. But it's all about your concentration, your own focus. You understand? So I don't look at a person and say just because of their genetic makeup, all right, or their will at that moment that they're not going to be able to ascend. Because all it takes is for them to acknowledge the Messiah in them or the Mashiach in them. Never forget that Mashiach means will. Mm -hmm. Mashiach is a word meaning will. Are you with me? What you got? And that brings me to the point when you're talking about this as well. Um, when you got so in order to tap into that energy, you got to go through many different initiation processes, mm -hmm. right? Which is connected to a form of internal self-law and management to where it puts you in alignment to where you become a master. So you got to go through a path of Nasu, Maluku, mm -hmm. and Lalu. Mm -hmm. So can you break that down? This is all connected to your book. Ladies and gentlemen, get this man's book. Um, you can cash up him right here at Play for, uh, Play for Change. Mm -hmm. But He's going to break this down as far as like the, the initiation processes on how to connect in a form of mastery, how you got to go through those levels and how it's all connected to the ascension process. Right. So I appreciate you. Ascension is scientific, right? It's not mm -hmm. something that should be looked at as a mystical thing. It shouldn't be looked at as a spiritual thing. It should be looked at as a scientific thing. Okay. When you turn on the stove, 
and you're boiling water, you know that that water is speeding up. You know that that water is changing state, all right, or altering its position in your reality because you can behold the vapor. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the same manner, you can look and tell whether or not somebody is ascending because you're beholding their ether, mm -hmm. all right? It comes off of them. It excludes from a person. They mix from a person, all right? So when we brought higher sciences or uh, a stronger information or more potent information to a people, what they were able to in turn do was literally ascend or become faster. Think about it. It bliss, fiery being, a gen, all right? Human beings, clay beings. Does that mean that human beings can only become fire? Or are there other advanced or more advanced stages of matter or states of matter? All right, which is one of the things that Iblis was concerned about because of this portion of Allah put into these people or this portion of the source put into these people, they could in turn ascend beyond even Iblis, okay? Or the other angels, because remember, people look at these people as devils and all this other stuff, but at one point in time, they were right there as a part of the heavenly host which meant that they possess some of the same informations that, or, or gems or jewels or secrets or degrees that some of these ascended masters that you refer to as good possess. That's why when they came to the earth as the 200 fallen angels, that didn't mean they forgot their sciences. Mm. And when the ones who you call the grades come in and assist or aid in the, the production of the atomic bomb, you know what I'm saying? Those are fallen angels or descended angels who come into the earth plane, but they still know the science of the hydrogen bomb. You know what I'm saying? They still know how, what happens if you clash atoms together. You know what I mean? So this is the same type of science. So when people realize you're a solid being at first, you're made out of clay, but then you get some spirit or some knowledge or some life, and you start to speed up because of the heat, all right, or because of that light or that fire, then you start to ascend, and literally you're able to move more. You're able to travel more. However many people astral project, you know what I'm speaking about. Because there's so much you can do with this physical body, as you call it, which all you say when you say physical is you just saying solid. And right. solid to you means that there's a, a, a reflection of light, you know what I'm saying, uh, to some degree that you can see with these eyes in this observable universe with this visible light. Okay, but anybody really astro project, you know that when you go into that plane, there's still visible light. There's still solids. You understand? There's still all these other things that happen within what you call the physical plane. So even the spiritual plane operates off of some type of physicality. The point here is once you start learning what the true sound is, okay, that's why the most basic sound of the universe is referred to as the Om. Mm -hmm. Okay, you go research the compassion of Buddha. Okay, the Om, the most basic sound of the universe. I taught people how they can hear that sound. I said, all you got to do is go under what? Water. Place yourself <laughs> under water in a bathtub or in a pool. All right. And listen to that sound. You will hear that the water itself, when it interacts with your consciousness or your being or your sensory input, you hear oh, mm -hmm. you literally hear it. OK, so listen to this. If I say home, humming, human. All right. Home, home. Remember the movie E.T., E.T. phone home. And I told people, you say phone, you're saying the phonetics, the sound. Mm -hmm. And home is the sound. We say home, you say oh. And that ohm, or that most basic sound of the universe, hum, is what causes you to literally speed up. When you hum, literally, if you're humming or saying ohm, scientifically, they will tell you, you can heal your body. And with that actual sound, you can concentrate or focus that sound into different points of the self to charge different points of the self. I don't know how many times this has been explained, but you're hearing it like none before because you have something referred to as in science, sono lumen essence. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing it down like that for a reason. Sono lumen essence. And when you say sono, you're saying sound. And when you say lumen, as in illuminati, luminescent, luminous. Okay, you're speaking about light, lu. Don't forget lu. Okay, and then listen to the word essence. So you have sound, light, essence. And what is sono lumen essence? If I take sound, I'm able to use sound waves and channel or focus or concentrate those sound waves inside of any type of liquid or water, right? And at that point, it'll cause some type of bubble to form within that liquid, and then that bubble can collapse. But what happens when that bubble collapses? Okay, through a process referred to as capitation. The mm. bubble collapses and emits light. Go look up what I'm telling you. Because if you hum or do the ohm and you're not channeling it or not sending it to the root and then sending it to the sacral, and then sending it to the solar plexus, and then sending it to the anahata or the heart, and then sending it to the deshuda, the throat, and then send it. You have all these different points that you can send, and concentrate your own sound on. All right, and it'll start to not only heal it, but it will amplify it. If something goes from a state of darkness into light, it has ascended. 
Mm -hmm. Like with me, so to take sound and create light from sound is to show you that your own ability to listen and hear and replicate what you're taught will cause for you to be able to ascend. That's why we say fix the condition of what is within you, and you're going to fix the condition of what is without you. It's in El Quran, all right? And that's what we go into the science of the kingdom of God being within you. So look at it like this. If human beings are said to be some 60 to 70% water, right? Mm -hmm. You got the heart and the brain is like 73%. You got the lungs is like 83%. Uh, you got the bones, some 31%. Okay, different parts of your body. Have different, but water makes up most of your body, the majority of your body. Okay, mm -hmm. well, that's a liquid. So then you can literally channel, you can use sono luminescence to channel sound through your body using the water that's present in you. Mm. Are you with me? So this happens inside. And then if you equate it to what happens when you get a piece of information or when you're humble enough to receive a piece of information, you can bring it to people and you can teach them to heal themselves. Are you with me? So watch this. If we started off with water and we said, <laughs> let there be light in the, in the book of Genesis chapter one, verse two and three. All right. And the, the, the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. God said, let there be light. Okay. And we said, let there be light. And guess what? That was soul luminescence right there. Because mm -hmm. water was there first. And it was a sound. Let there be light. Oh, the most basic sound of the universe. And that created these small pockets or bubbles in that reality or in that realm that sparks light. So what is light in the esoterics? Information. Mm -hmm. You understand? So when you charge yourself up cycle by cycle, wheel by wheel, chakra by chakra, up to the crown, this is the ascension that we were speaking about when it comes to the black all the way up to the white. Mm. That's why I let a diagram out, and that diagram was, once you get to that green, that is the heaven, which means that that is the new earth. Because mm. your, first, your first earth is the black, right? Your new earth, as you were seeing, becomes the green, meaning you will be standing what Melchizedek brought forth, brought forth over standing. You will be standing on top of the green, operated from the heart and up. Are you with me? And anybody that's understanding or standing under has the black or the ground, the soil as their earth, and the heaven is their uh, heart, and it can't go beyond it. That's why we say what? Revelation chapter 21, he that sat upon the throne. All right? Read Revelation chapter 21. It starts out saying, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Mm -hmm. Okay? So there was an old earth. There was an old heaven. But whoever this John was, the Yohanan was, said what? I saw a new one. And uh, what you say, the old heaven and earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Saying whatever waters, okay, or whatever life was associated with who and what you were before you reached that green version of you, all right, the real, true, authentic version of you, not the synthetic version of you, whoever that was, passes away. Same thing we do with the Masonic orders. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the Rosicrucian orders. Same thing we do with any order of darkness into light. Are you mm -hmm. So to ascend, the, the key answer is, to ascend, you first have to be willing to understand that which you don't know. Mm. Be able to confess it. I don't know this. All right. So you take the scientific process to figure it out and do the math on it. Like in the movie Knowing, it was all about numbers. It was all about figures. Mm -hmm. They were figuring it out. And whoever yeah. this Lucinda person was in the movie Knowing, what does Lucinda mean? It means light. Go look it up. <laughs> she was able to bring to this world light through the numbers. Mm -hmm. and, and from those figures, they were able to figure out how to activate themselves. And they did in the movie what Melchi York said you will be able to do. You become clairvoyant. All right. You understand psychometry. Okay. You become more intuitive. And more importantly, most importantly, you become telepathic. Okay. Which means you take a path of beings who are far off. Look at the word tele. It means far off or far away. Mm -hmm. Okay. And path is speaking about your brain, or the psyche, but also a walk of life. And those beings who brought this science here to remind you, literally bring your mind back to Ray or Ray, Ra, the light, okay, wanted you to be able to ascend. Go watch Alice in the Wonderland, okay, or Alice in Wonderland. It was all about going down the rabbit hole, which was into the darkness. She was into the darkness first. She fell. Mm -hmm. Alice was a noble person. She went from being noble in a realm of nobility to falling, okay, mm -hmm. into a realm of deficiency, as it's being called, or the material plane. All right. And as she fell, she had to go through all these different realms. All right. And a queen in that reality wanted everything to be red, <laughs> painting the no. rose red. All right. She didn't want white roses. She wanted red roses. That was her reality, just like Doja Cat. She's painting the town red. 
You understand? So it was all about the death shirt or the destructive frequencies until eventually she found out that she was what? Asleep and had to wake up. But who was that character that had the clock in their hand? The white rabbit. Yep. Because I'm late. I'm late for a very important date. No time to say hello, goodbye. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. White rabbits represent ascension. Okay. And when they gave these children in the movie knowing the white rabbits, it was supposed to signify their ascension. They're having completed their ascension. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm Which is why we say, remember the time. Don't forget the time. I swear by the time. All right. Somebody had to step in and help human beings. The Ethereans have already done it. The works have already been laid out. All right, Ruby, what you got for me? Yeah, but um, I was basically trying to figure out a lot of people be wanting to know as far as like the new heaven. They a lot of people don't have an intuitive understanding of how it's all connected to the Hopi mythology. We mm-hmm. talked about the Blue Star Kachina, but mm-hmm. this is all acclimated to uh, the Nineteen Galaxy. When you're talking about Planet Risma, you got the three suns, you got the sustainer, the yep. provider, and then you got the um, I forgot the other one, but it's Utu, Apsu, and Shamus. And those mm-hmm. three suns, uh, from my perspective, is actually supposed to uh, cause a magnetic pole shift. It's supposed to flip the poles from a uh, from a uh, a prophetic standpoint to where it can cause a certain calamity and the dreadful day and things of that nature. To right. where these uh, manifestations of judgment is going to be activated by nature. So, uh, can you give your uh, demonstration on the uh, Blue Star Kachina and how it's connected to this new heaven and new earth? Righteous. Well, a star is a what? A sun. Or a sun is a star. Mm-hmm. And again, the brother Andre came forth and he was wearing all green when he did it. And if you don't know, mm-hmm. Andre 3000 is a student of Dr. Melikazi York, if you didn't know that. Right. Him, and, him and Big Boy. And now, right. before, before, let me interject. Remember that uh, I think I had an illustration of Dr. York. He was holding up a flute. He yeah. was playing like a flute and he had the green Ethereum energy all around him as he was playing that flute. Mm-hmm. Because we all know that certain instruments, they contain the ethro energy that can basically break open the grid system. It can infiltrate, you know, the ley line grid system or the draconian reptilian net or whatever you want to call it. But he was actually doing the same thing on that on his album cover. So, like I said, it's not a coincidence that certain things like this is actually happening. Right. So, Righteous. So you have it where, first of all, let's look at what Kachina is. A Kachina is a master teacher, okay? Mm-hmm. But it wasn't just any master teacher. It was somebody that was supposed to happen from the stars, okay, or from the heavens. And these beings were able to come through what was referred to as Thunderbirds, travel into the earth plane, and teach certain people what was supposed to happen. So everything you call in prophecy was delivered, again, by the ones who were referred to as the shadow people, the whisper people, Ethereans, mm-hmm. or whatever. In the movie, no one, they call them whisper people. Mm-hmm. Okay, but Lucinda wasn't getting the prophecies by herself, okay, or the predictions by herself. Somebody was giving those predictions to her. Are you with me? Mm-hmm. So a part of that prophecy, and I'm familiar mm-hmm. with what she's speaking about, they speak of a single-hearted person, somebody who was going to be able to come through, put the world on his back, and bring people out of the darkness into the light, okay? That's what the light was representing. However, you can't do that without having the sound of purity. And in order for you to have the sound of purity, that's why I tell you, study your color spectrum. When you realize what these colors represent and what they can be used for or what they can be used to portray, after you pass the green and get up to the blue, now you're bringing in a new world. You understand? So go and study or watch Lil Uzi Vert's music video for I Just Wanna Rock. You understand? Where he spoke about what his high was, and then you'll find, go look up Lil Uzi Vert, Demon High. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Because these types of beings, because you have uh, Luzi talking about, yo, you all going to hell with me. You know what I mean? It's too late. You've been listening to the songs. Listen, you didn't even listen to the song. You didn't even know what it was about. You didn't even know, right? And he also said that his music, that particular song, was hypnosis. You understand? But why would he say he just wants to rock? Okay? Because rock is Peter. And rock is heavy. And heavy metal cannot ascend. Are you with me? But go watch that music video, and you will see the blue star and red star or the blue and red Kachina throughout the music video. It's mm. speaking about, that they refer to as twins. It is speaking about a pole shift. It's speaking about gears turning in your reality, all right, that say that there's going to be a sound. They just, I just watched the movie Trolls where mm. they had uh, rock stars going around trying to dominate all the other sounds of music. Mm-hmm. You understand? And the rock stars came with the red or the amber light. 
You understand? So there's a switch that's supposed to take place. They said that your earth was going to stop. Okay, your world was going to stop rotating and it was going to rotate in another direction. Already scientists have come out and said that the core of the planet has re has, has reversed its rotation. Mm -hmm. You understand? So he said it's going to stop and spin in another direction. Different keys or, or signs are going to be shown and said that there's a new day and time. All right? And you've already seen that. That's why they started to give out these other translations and interpretations and interpolations of the Rainbow Warriors, okay? When they were speaking about a certain group of people who they referred to as tree huggers and all these other hippies, and they said they were going to come in and help fight the, the good fight and the harmonic convergence was going to happen, all this stuff. So the key thing is, it's about the purity of sound, okay? Mm -hmm. Because everything that's happened, they say nothing new under the sun, all right? But that sun is always shifting in frequency. So just off of the fact that your observable universe to you, which is it's still tricky because observable universe doesn't just mean what's happening on the earth plane. It happens all the way back toward the cosmic microwave background and everything in beyond in, in, in between the, the dark matter and all this other stuff that's happening here. Okay. But because your sun is the reality that you're looking at, meaning everything that you're seeing is based off of the source of light, your sun. All right. Every time that sun changes in frequency, your world changes. It has to. You understand? Mm -hmm. And if that sun goes out, then your world will be affected by it. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? So for the people that understand what I'm saying, once you get to that point of realization of saying everything is, there's nothing new under the sun, okay? Well, then it gets back around to that human breakdown yeah. of saying human beings, and flip the word human around, you get namu. Mm -hmm. All right? What is namu? Namu, like nomo, the normal safety is the ones who would have been in the water, okay? But namu was also a creatrix of heaven and earth or the earth and heaven, okay? Once you realize that you wanna be more than just a human being, you will start taking into consideration everything that's happening in your reality. They say in the book of Luke 21, chapter 25, uh, chapter 21, verse 25, that you have to pay attention to the signs of the suns, all right, the stars and the moon. There'll be signs in the heavens, okay? So what you're saying with Blue Star, Red Star, Kachina, or any other master that brought forth or twin that brought forth some pieces of information is they all said, make sure that you're paying attention to what happens in the different pockets of your universe because you'll be able to know what's changing like the Dark Crystal movie. Go back and watch Dark Crystal. Yeah. They spoke about it. There was literally somebody that was breaking it down saying they watch the suns and the stars and that's how they know certain events are going to take place. So right now, your scientists are watching your sun, okay, which is the yellow sun, all right? And if you have a yellow and blue and red sun, like in the movie Chronicles of Riddick, right? Or in any of the other depictions that they show you, these different lights that had to shine on risk, okay? When Melchior York broke, brought forth the signs of risk, okay? All three of these suns were shining on the planet Earth at one time. Well, not the planet Earth, the planet risk at one time. And that's how they knew, okay, that it was time for a new world to be formed. So yeah, that's that called the bright day. What'd you say? That was, the, that was called the bright day, I believe, right? I don't remember being called the bright day. It was something where it said they all the three suns and it was on the and they stayed on a planet for like three days or something like that. And you know, uh, in the holy tablets, he said that mm -hmm. they all shone like it was it was a, a, a degree, an angle. They all shone on the planet at one time, and the magnetosphere or what you refer to as the ozone layer here, okay, started to deteriorate on risk. Mm -hmm. And that's where you get your story of the Anunnaki having to come in search of gold to save their planet because they had to build or rebuild their atmosphere to save it, okay? So go into the man who fell to earth and you will see that that is based off of risk. Right. And him himself, the Faraday person, is a Riskian, okay? Who had the ability to transform himself into a spaceship like Malachi York put in the Holy Tablets and travel all the way here as an adept and teach the science of quantum fusion. And he was supposed to take something back to his planet to save it. Now let's look at quantum fusion. Quantum is speaking about spiritual, okay, mm -hmm. or spirituality. It's a scientific term for the spirit world. When you study quantum physics, which is what Malachi York spoke of in the Holy Tablets, when you speak of quantum physics, you're saying, now I want to get down to the, what's quantum? The most basic, discrete units of the reality that I'm operating in. That spirit, ether, all that that you speak of. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you said go study it. But quantum fusion is speaking about that new song. Mm -hmm. or their harmonic convergence because you spiritual beings all right notice that you're calling yourself the spiritual people all right have to fuse and you have to bring your sound together under one sound all right that's going to spark off a newer light or a blue light in a new world 
that's when we're going to know. Okay, first of all, we're knowing when you start, start getting your green lights to put them in your house. All right? But we're really going to know that you're ready to build that new heaven and new earth or bring that new heaven and new earth here. Okay, because Matthew 6, 9 said, Our Father which art in heaven. All right? And it went on to say, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wherever those beings are, bring your rulership here. We have an old dominion, okay? But we need a new dominion. Mm. And no dominion. A.D. Okay, which I know dominion say, what? The year of our Lord. But their Lord's reign is up. You need a new dominion. There needs to be a new A.D. <laughs> Are you with me? Interestingly enough, A.D. gives you one four. All right, for Revelation chapter 14. Okay, mm. you 144,000 are chosen ones who are going to bring on that new dominion. Because once they said in Revelation chapter 14, that new sound or that new blue sun or that new blue sound, okay, mm. was emitted, that there was a resonance that came from the heavens. Are you with me? So let's get into the flute. Yes. <laughs> they heard the sound of harpers harping. Did they say that people were literally playing the harp? No, they didn't say that. But they said they heard the sound of the harpers harping. Go and study the story of the Ariel school phenomenon. Okay? Interestingly enough, when you say Ariel, you're talking about the heavens. <laughs> okay? When you say school, you're talking about show or mm -hmm. hell. All right? So it's still the same story. The Ariel school phenomenon was a real situation, a real story in Africa that took place in 1994. And they put it in a, a documentary in 2020 that came out 2020 uh, uh, phenomenon, right? And there was another one I think it's called Aerial School Phenomenon Documentary. But either way, the phenomenon documentary, okay, came out in 2020 and they put that story in there and explained about it. And they had all these children that were out there to be contacted by these beings, okay? That they came down on these craft, these, 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 they said the spherical looking crafts and metallic looking crafts. And they stepped off and they described them as people, all right? They described them as not just people, black people with hippie hair, mm -hmm. which means dreadlocks, all right? And they said that they were able to speak into their brain with images, so they were telepathic. And mm -hmm. they warned them about the destruction that was coming to their planet. And then one of the young girls that were there, because it was all, they like, said, grade six, so I think sixth grade, I have to double check. But they were probably like 11, 12 years old, somewhere around there, right? But one of the little girls said, that the sound that the, tr the the craft made like a flute. Yeah, I remember that. You remember? Yeah, I remember that. Okay, that. let's go to the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind, where they were drawn to the mountain, all right, which interestingly enough, they referred to it as Devil's Tower. They were drawn to this mountain, and when they got on top of the mountain, so long as they didn't fall asleep on the way, remember they were putting out the sleep gas, mm -hmm. or the sleep spirit, or the sleep information <laughs> to bring people back into the darkness. So long as they were able to continue to ascend to that high point and not fall asleep, they were able to witness the new song, all right? And how do you know that? They were playing the piano keys for the tones, mm -hmm. all right? And then the mothership responded by a tone, okay? Why? Because they, they even put it in one of the He-Man movies. Music is a universal language. Mm. Every being understands it. You know what I mean? So what would it say that you as human beings were able to receive a song that only the 144,000 could learn because of your telepathic ability, or well, actually we know it, and you were able to not only receive the breakdown or the buildup of that song, you could replicate it. That's bringing heaven to earth. The sounds of the heavens coming down to earth. Mm -hmm. So when you say a new blue song, you say, oh, I wanted to make a rap album, all right? But I wound up playing the flute. Right. I'm telling you what it means. Are you with me? That you have to bring on that resonance of blue, which is higher than green. Okay? And you have to know what it means that the red ones or the rock ones or the death metal ones are trying to fight that. That's why they wanted to integrate death metal and heavy metal, all this other rock shit into hip-hop. Mm. Because hip-hop was closely associated with you. And y'all know what I'm talking about. Right. You understand? So they wanted to throw that song out. Like, literally, out of tune. <laughs> Say auto-tune. Out of tune. Mm. Okay, they, didn't want, they didn't want people to be in tune anymore. All right? They wanted you to be in a pool of Sam. They said, let's Sam pull these things. And Sam is not other than the poisonous one. All right? Mm. Uncle Sam wants you, which is the goat. They wanted you. So everybody walking around with the goat now. Okay? Mm. But they said that at one point in time, somebody was going to show up and separate the sheep from the goats. The Messiah. Exactly. That Messiah. They, said, they said also said that's the, the sign of the Blue Star Kachina. It's also the sign of the messianic figure as mm. well during that time period. Well, <laughs> that's what 
some say according to you know certain uh no, 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 you on point you on point that's why i said remember the prophecy spoke about the single-hearted person the single what single-hearted mm -hmm. heart okay so somebody has to or had to be able to meet al -Kadir. somebody had to go to the junction of the now of this day and time somebody had to do it or somebody's had to do it. it's not saying that only one person can do it but right. somebody had to realize wait a minute we don't know shit. <laughs> we claiming that we the conscious this is a better hold on now we forgotten about the elohim we mm. forgotten about the ascended ones we forgotten about the nateru everybody's turned the nateru into attributes something's wrong okay that's why i tell people listen to those children in rules and bible they're telling you a story all right which is a modern day prophecy they received messages from Jibril in modern day, 1994, not in 623. Mm -hmm. 1994, they received the message from these angels. And people say, oh, it's just aliens. But you will listen when they say angels. It's the same thing, except this just happened yesterday. Are you with me? Also, go watch the movie Phenomenon, not just a documentary. They had a movie called uh, The Phenomenon, which starred a person named George Malley. Okay? And I tell people, pay attention to Mally because you got Melly Kai. Mm. All right? But they were speaking about the true light. And George Mally saw the light in the sky and was able to do all these things like Melly Kai, like the Meteor Man movie. And what was Meteor Man based off of? A green light being that came into the reality. Everybody say it's a meteor. I don't know why you call it a meteor. Unless you're saying meta, media, meta, okay? Because if you say media, meta, then you're speaking about who had to meet uh, Moses at the Mediterranean Sea or the, where the seas met, okay? Mm. So media man, okay, would be Kadir. And if I'm making that up, then why was Kadir the green one? And the one who was the main character, I think it was Robert Townsend, one of them, who was the one who was able to receive that light from Kadir was able to do the same thing that George Mallet was able to do, which mm -hmm. is touch a book and get all the information from it. And you speaking all these different languages and you smart now, you powerful now. Same thing Malachi was able to do. Oh, uh, you know what's crazy about that movie? Actually, I got a video, um, there's this lady like everything as far as like solar cycle 25 when you look at the number spectrum of 2025 they said that's when the sun is going to be at uh solar maximum mm -hmm. when you talked about this non-ether etheric frequency coming in it's actually supposed to bring about a different change to the planet as far as like humans vibrated vibrating at a certain frequency and you also going to have anything that's connected to nature is i should have not have flowers you're going to have intrinsic vegetation growing at an extensive rate. Mm -hmm. So remember in the Meteor Man movie, when he went up, he used that green frequency, that green ethereal energy, and he was touching all the, the fruits and the vegetables in the hood. And they grew. Yeah. But I, so since we in that time period and we out of that 6,000 year curse, as we transitioning into uh, the sun cycle, the Aquarian age, mm -hmm. this is what's happening on the planet. I'm going to play this video. It's a quick video. Yeah. on my tomato plants right now i should definitely not have new peppers coming in i have peppers growing in december i also should not have new strawberries it's december i definitely should not have any mint spearmint any kind of mint coming in it's december this is all fresh mint y'all i definitely should not be having fresh sage either fresh sage should not come in until the spring i have catnip blooms catnip blooms this should not be coming in until the spring it is december so that's how you know that that's actually you know what you're saying is actually true mm -hmm. this green frequency is actually combating the patriarchal aspect that's connected to the lunar cycle the lunar cycle is the material that's connected to capitalism and things of that nature so everything that's connected to the matriarchal order in nature has to take back the planet mm -hmm. so with that being said like i said that green frequency that's connected to the magnetic field of the planet the magnetosphere these energies that's coming in is activating you on an energetic level and it's mm -hmm. activating nature on an energetic level. So with that being said, we, you know, as humans, we supposed to be, you know, 
reverberate, reverberating with the energy of the planet. We're supposed to be metamorphosizing with it. So mm -hmm. this is all connected to the fact that uh, a lot of people saying that we're going to see a lot of changes in um, the the year 2024 as we transition into 2025. Yep. And they're talking about solar cycle 25. Fucking get it. Solar cycle 25, because 2025 is actually the nine year. And then when you look at solar cycle 25, you got the seven, which is also the God frequency gamma radiation coming in from the magnetic field. So can you explain that? How is, you know, that same energy is actually, you know, reverberating the planet and, and putting everything in perspective, you know, as far as on a material level and a nature level? Exactly. Right now they've been speaking about the solar pole reversal uh -huh. every, every, they, every, around every 11 years, there's a actual pole reversal of your sun or pole shift of the sun. You understand around that time from 23 to 25, they've been speaking about rolling out the new industrial revolution and that new industrial revolution will be quantum technology. Mm -hmm. you understand? So you should be hearing more about that soon, more quantum tech and also more conversation about the integration from or of mankind with artificial intelligence, okay, which will be deemed artificial consciousness eventually. Mm -hmm. So when you, again, it's like this, lucid dreaming. If you're in a dream and you decide you don't want to experience what you're experiencing anymore, with lucid dreaming, which means you're aware of the fact that you're in a dream state of observation, with lucid dreaming, you can change that reality. You can shift it. If you've been chased and you don't want to be chased, you can appear in a flower field. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? The ones that was chasing, you can turn them into doves. It's just like that in this reality. It takes more work, though, because it's a more of a dense realm. But because you're already starting to make the alterations, why I tell people, why would you not burn the green light? Why would you not put out the green light knowing that the highest master that we have, and it's actually non-debatable, the highest master that we've had, and I've said, let's go master for master, then nobody want to play, so I don't want to hear it. <laughs> the highest master we have is Dr. Melakazi York. Facts. You can say whatever you want to say. What you can't say is that was false. Because no one has come and completed as many degrees and schools and stages of information and introduced as much to your plane as he has. Yet, he came through with the green light. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have the sons of the green light. He came through with that resonance. So at this point, why would you not replicate that light with the tangible replication saying, let's actually bring the green light to the material plane. Because that means you're saying, meet me at the crossroad. I want to see who's going to meet me here. You've already, you know what a red light is. You know whose world this was before. That's why I wrote down in the How to Love Again book. Okay. You have sin's world. Okay. People say you were born into sin. People say, not me. I wasn't born into sin. No, you were born into sin because right. sin was sinner. All right. Which was who? The moon. All right, or the moon god or deity of the ancient Mesopotamian days. Okay, so if you're born into sin, you're born into Zuin, sin, Zuin. Listen to it. Mm -hmm. All right, and then the How to Love Again book, I said, Are you prepared? Because that's what you have to do to grab hold of that line or that rope, just like Musa did. Listen to what I'm about to break down to you so that you can be brought out of Zuin's world and brought into Zion's world. You go from Zuin to Zion. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? So this is where you get into the science of a Musalim. <laughs> All right, or Muslim. So you say Muslim in the Hebrew or Hebrew, you get full or complete or holy, whole. All right, you say Musa. What does Musa mean? Again, to be drawn out of the water, mm -hmm. taken out of the old water. All right, what is lean? Lean is a line or a rope or a cord. So Musalim, Muslim. All right, those of you who grab hold of that rope, like if you were drowning, right? You grab hold of that rope. And you're able to be pulled out of the muck and the mire. Mm. Okay? And then you were standing over the rest of the people who were drowning or sinking in that reality. So the point is, if people really wanted to ascend, then they would. That's why I'm saying hold on to the rope. And that's why I tell you cord, because the word cord gave you the word sign etymologically. All right. And sign was cord. So that means that we gave you every sign we could. We gave you every rope we could give you. And we wanted you to be on one accord for all of you to hold together onto that rope so that you could be pulled out of that density. So now mm -hmm. people are saying, what? We got to come like uh, Rallo, you got Kevin Gates, 
You got another brother who was a Jada Kiss that came out. A lot of people coming out now and they turning their life over to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, why though? You understand? A lot of people coming in the name of the source now. Okay, I had a song that came out this year, actually it came out 2021. This year it went viral. And the song was called Source. Mm -hmm. All right, and I spoke about coming in the name of that source. And it encouraged and pushed other people to do the same. I'm not saying that you're worshiping me or none of that. I'm saying you go directly to that source. But when mm -hmm. you go to that source, like if you take a plug, they say, I'm the plug. Why they say they're the plug? Because they have some type of connection, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. To the source. You put the plug in the socket and mm -hmm. they're able to draw that energy and charge whatever needs to be charged. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm saying go to the socket. You can look at me as a plug. That's fine. But I'm taking you to the socket. Okay. And then you charge yourself up. And then watch the new reality that you're going to spawn. So let's look at it from what you're asking. If the room is dark, all right, and you yourself grab hold of that rope, which is your own plug or your etheric cord, which you came into this realm with when you were born into sin, they call it the umbilical cord. Mm. Okay, listen to the key sounds, om, umbilical. Or you can say om biblical because mm. om is the most basic sound in the universe and biblical is Bible and Bible is basic instruction before leaving the earth or the ground, or the darkness. Are you with me? You came out of the darkness into the light, which was the false light, the red light of this Suen or Zuen, Sin, Moon world, hey, Lao's world, all right? And the moment that you were born into this realm, they severed that connection that you had to the mother, or Madre, okay, which is Medu, which is a speech of who? The Nature, the Madu Nature, the Word of God, Mother Nature, as they call it, or Madu Nature, all right? They cut that cord, and then you had to find your way throughout life at that point to the reestablishment point so that you can form the etheric cord again. Because you already had the physical cord manifested as your umbilical cord. But then you had an etheric cord that needed to be, what's the point here? When you say divine, you're saying divine. Mm -hmm. And if you're talking about divine, that's a cord that's connected, like you just spoke about the plants, that's a cord that's connected to the realm. Now here goes the higher science. In the movie, The Matrix, he had to be unmoored. They had him in a pod. What color was the light of the pod? Red, all right? He had to be unplugged, which means to be unmoored. <laughs> which mm. means you have to go beyond the science of the moors. Are you with me? Mm. He had to be unplugged and brought out of that darkness, and he had to ascend, which means he had to correct his state or correct his status and to become a national. A lot of people think this means paperwork. It doesn't. Hey, I'm, hey, I'm glad you said that because... A lot of people think that you can combat the energy of the energy extraction matrix with paperwork. You don't fight paperwork with their own system. Now, as the planet is going back into a matriarch, nature is going to give you back to the planet because nationality is connected to nativity and nativity is navel and navel is your birth, birthright, your etheric core to the planet. I had to interject and put that out. No, so. no, 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 no. That's I mean, that, Exactly. Yes, exactly. That's the mm -hmm. point. The point is that once you come out of that red and you're unmoored, you're right on point. You're unplugged. Mm -hmm. And your ability to detach is what the Buddhists were speaking about. That's how you reach nirvana, okay? Or achieve moksha mm -hmm. and break the cycle of reincarnation or having to come back into the same body over and over again. Okay, what was the movie? It was, I think it was called Boss Level. Mm -hmm. When they had to keep coming back in or they had another movie called Infinite where they were stuck and they had to keep coming back as different people. You understand? So the point is, you have to unmoor yourself from the dark plane or the dark plane and be ready to ascend. And if you were to plug in, okay, which is to ground yourself, then you're allowing for that electricity. That's why I say, I'm not telling you that the root chakra is evil. That'd be a mistake. That'd be an error. I'm not saying to you that the crown chakra is good. I'm saying that Moses had his information. El Kadir had his information. Mm -hmm. You had to know the darkness and the light. All right, why? So you can know which cycle, okay? Why do you say cycle? Moon cycle meant moon or sin chakra because the word cycle is chakra. You have mm -hmm. to know when it's the moon chakra, all right, or the red chakra as opposed to the crown chakra, which is the sun crown, corona, okay? Mm -hmm. Cycle, chakra. You got to know when. And if now you're in a sun cycle, there's no time for uh, Sin or Zuan's world or any of his sciences. That's why Malachi York on Mount Zion, Dr. York, 1992, was saying what? It's time to teach right knowledge, straight out. He said, I can't do any of the old 
religious stuff at this point. He said, we only got eight more days. I, I got to teach you straight out, right mm -hmm. now. Are you with me? He had to bring them out of that darkness. And he was literally doing that teaching in purple mm. on Mount Zion. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. You'll find that yeah. in the Heart of Love Again book that I'll show you why. Because the Zion will give you the purple and yeah. the Zion gives you the red. Okay? Mm. And the root itself or the, the foundation for Zuan's world is darkness. Okay? And the ceiling, which will be the foundation for Zion's world, is white or brightness. Okay? Which is the illumination of the self. The halo mm. being received to become the etheric beings that you see in the end of the movie knowing. What you got for me? Um, we want to get into some questions because we already at the hour 20 mark. Mm -hmm. uh, Y'all got some questions for the brother. Yeah, I mean, he's dropping some real signs. Hit the brother's cash app because, like I said, he's doing a fundraiser for the 144000 Like, in the, the funds is going to be used to bring about uh, different information, more books, more illustrations, more music videos, you know what I'm saying, to edify the collective. Um, but if you got some questions for this brother, um, hit, hit us up with some questions. Let's see what we got. They want to know what is the difference between Yahweh and Enlil. Enlil is a Yahweh mm -hmm. or Yahweh. And mm -hmm. so is Enki. And a lot of people think that these people are brothers. In all actuality, they're half brothers, which means yeah. that it will be different. Let's say, let's say Enlil would be Moses. Okay. And Enki could be Kadir. Okay. Because they still have their own degrees and their own information coming from two different worlds, or they have brothers. All right. And a lot of times when you're speaking of Enlil and Enki, people think you're referring to one person, but you're speaking about a whole orientation of people like the avatars, okay, or the descended ones who at one point were ascended, at, descended into the earth plane, okay, or the Decepticons and the Autobots. All right. So these are fleets, different groups of beings. A Yahweh is saying somebody who has 360, 360, 720. All right. Yah is just to say good and way is just to say evil. Mm -hmm. All right. Or Torah, Tob. Which is good and ra, -ra which is evil. You understand? So a uh, Yahweh is or uh, uh, in will is a Yahweh. Okay, somebody who was an ascended master to the point where he had both degrees, okay, of disagreeable and agreeable. And so was Enki. Meaning, just like you, they can choose to do evil or they can choose to do good, or they can choose to be nefarious or virtuous. Mm -hmm. Another question from chemistry. Talking about the harmonic convergence. What is that? Okay, that, that ties into the science of 144,000. Okay, because if you come together and create that sound, think about it harmony, okay, and convergence, something coming together. Literally, there's a gathering, okay, or an election. Because we say elect, it's saying conduct. And to mm -hmm. conduct is to bring people together, okay, or to assemble. All right. So when people come together to create a sound, just like we were speaking about, you're going to form a new reality just based off of that. All right, this type of sound that a chorus creates. All right, look at the word chorus, core us. All right, when the core of us is ignited, all right, we create a new sound. Okay, the type of sound that a chorus creates can affect the mood of people out in the parking lot of the church. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, even when you say acquire, when they acquire that sound, they can affect the things that are happening around outside of them. You start feeling what's referred to as the spirits. I feel the spirit. You understand? So imagine 144,000 people not only coming together to form a new sound. Think about the real science that we break it down here. Because if there are 144,000 of you that come together, something had to take place to get 144,000 of you to agree on something. You understand? That didn't have anything to do with just the patriarchal or the breakdown of Zuan's world. It had something to do with bringing things back to order. That means something had to transpire. A new sound had to be emitted that would have encouraged or influenced you to come together to form a new reality. So the harmonic convergence is saying, that just like the critical mass science is saying, right? If we're asking for 144,000, that's the critical mass. That's what we need. That's the exact number that it would take for each and every one of you who are part of that 144,000, all right, to go out and affect 10,000 more people. Are you with me? And that would be sum summing up to the population of your planet. Mm -hmm. You start affecting different corners of this very universe just because, huh? No, I didn't say nothing. Just because you decided to come together. So the harmonic convergence is not only just the sound that you make, 
okay? The agreeable sound, literally the agreeable sound. When you say, stand with me, agree with me. We're all a part of God's body, the song that came out, right? I need you to survive. Flip the letters around and survive and you get revive us. Mm -hmm. You understand? Revive us. That sound would revive us. Why am I saying mm -hmm. us? Why am I saying we? Because you go back to the most basic science of the human and how I broke down for you that you have the word hume or hum and I'm and hum meant ground and I'm in heaven, but I'm also meant we mm -hmm. in Hebrew. Are you with me? So we, us, the man has become like what? One of us, knowing good from evil. Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. Are you with me? So it's not about just you, yourself individually. It's about the all, the collective. You will succeed as a part of the all. Fail as an individual. You understand? Yeah. So that's why I say come together. Everybody's been saying the same thing. Come together, come together, come together. When are you going to actually do it? And if their book told you literal sciences and keys and gems, it's like they nudging you all day, put the elbow in your ribs. Say, nigga, this is what we're saying. Right? Yeah. That's what they want you to do. Don't tell me it doesn't work until you try it. And then you also got to understand that it's also acclimated to the doctor, doctrine of signatures of the neuroendocrine transducer. So you got the 144,000 crystals in the brain that's hitting and operating through fractions of light. Mm -hmm. So like I said, it produces more neurons. So that's how you tap into that energy. So as a chosen one, you got to tap into that energy in order to reap the benefits to edify the collective around you. Because you can't be a demon and still try to pull people out of a situation. Yeah. So you got to use them. Sometimes you got to be a part of the matrix in order to pull people out. But exactly. so uh, I'm going to hit you with another question. You said, do, do you believe? It says, do you believe or create hell in a death, in a death dream? I don't know what you mean. Yeah, I don't understand that one either. We're going to move on to the next one. Um, Let's see what we got. Who is currently gathering the 144,000? I think I do understand what they're saying. So I'm going to answer both. I think what they're saying is, is when you leave this realm, all right, do you create your own hell in your death dream? Okay? I'm going to assume Ooh. that that's what it means, meaning when you sleep indefinitely. All right? And what I can say is, your first of all, I don't I don't know. I haven't died yet. In, in, in this conscious reality, I haven't died, and I, I can't speak on it from personal experience. All I can say is, from astral projection, I have been uh, uh, able to see and experience what you refer to as hell. You understand? In different planes. And I know that the things that you do here are not like they judge you. Say, nigga, you stole that sticker, Snickers, you're going to hell. No, it's like <laughs> what is, your guilt has weight. You understand? So if you feel that you're guilty, it literally has weight. And the frequencies of your actions have weight. All right? That's why they said there's a weighing of the heart ceremony. And if you become too heavy, you won't be able to ascend. And for some reason, this astral plane has been set up that the lower you go into the realms, all right, it, that's where all of those demonic, ferocious, violent beings are for some reason. So I can say that what you do now in your waking state affects what happens when you leave the body. As far as indefinitely, I don't know because I haven't died. So I, I can't tell you that. And anybody that does tell you that, they don't know what they're talking about. Okay, because they 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 haven't died yet. You understand? Know okay. Who's currently gathering one hundred? I am. I am. He's, he's the only one that's uh, vibrating on that frequency of the green light movement. So uh, there's another question we got. Where does the black sun fit into the new sun cycle? The new sun cycle. I'm not sure. I, I was saying that because I, I was saying with it, but I'm not sure when you because the black sun is in your earth. Yeah, fact. Not to study Shambhala and Arvita. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I could say is that's it's still a good question. What I could say is when they speak of your core, they're talking about your plant, uh, the, your, your the black sun. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when you're saying black sun, I don't want you to think that the sun is just dark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want you to know that that's the sun that you don't know about. That's the dark sun. That's what mm -hmm. it's meant. Okay, the same way you say the dark side of the moon, it's saying you don't know what's on that other side. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, but it could be lit up as all get out, but you haven't seen it. Are right, you with me? So all I can say is pay attention to what your scientists are talking about when it comes to your core. Mm -hmm. All right. And it is is relative, all right, or related to the 
activity of your son, 100%. Yeah, it definitely is because the black sun is actually the supersonic battery to planet Earth that creates the frequency of seismic activity when you're talking about volcanoes because the volcanoes are actually like the pimples of planet Earth. So when you have these frequencies that's coming from the sun, it's actually giving power to the planet to produce that seismic activity in the magnetic pole shifts and tectonic plates. That's what that's what a black sun actually, you know, that's it's acclimated to that. So we're gonna get into uh one more question. We're gonna we gotta get a good question. Let's see what we got. But hit that uh like and subscribe button. Uh share the video, man, because the brother phase one, he dropped a lot of gems tonight. For a lot of people who was in the dark about the understanding of new heaven and new earth and how it's connected to the 144,000. So, like I said, it's, it's not only based on uh, the historical and the biblical context of it. He's also talking about who you are on a genetical level and how to absorb these frequencies. Mm -hmm. uh, OK, let's see what we got. Uh, I'm not seeing the guys. No new questions. Okay, it's Tama who's returning in 2025. Tama, I, I ain't talked to him. I know you're talking about Tama. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know why this happened either. Because a lot of people have been speaking about the Sumerian doctrine lately. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not really sure where that's coming from, but um. Actually, I am sure where it's coming from because a lot of people who took it from the Holy Tablets and they they started to spin off with it. I don't know. I have no idea, y'all. I don't know. We, one of you could be Tom Moves. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, I, I really want y'all to listen to what I'm about to tell y'all, all right? Be cautious about the motherfuckers who don't know how to say they don't know. Mm. We're just going to tell you anything. Exactly. Just, just to say they answer the question. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I can name 100 motherfuckers that would have tried to go in <laughs> Yeah, he will be here on the day that, bro. Listen, yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah, you know, I'll be the I'll be the first one to tell somebody I don't know if I'd be like, man, I have did it on you know many other people's channels. Like I don't know, because you know that's how you stagnate yourself to the point where you're not able to be in a state of evolution to you know learn about certain things. Exactly. Um, I, could, I, I could be Tom Moves. You know, I could be Tom Moves. I could be one of the sons of Tom Moves. It's just you know I don't know. I don't, it's a good question though, and it doesn't mean that there is no Tammuz coming, right? It's just that Tammuz has been translated to be Jesus, and again, people don't want to use none of the Christian doctrine. They don't want to use none of the Christian stuff. They just change the names around, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, they're telling the same story. I don't know when he comes. You know I mean? I, I'm gonna build on this question as well. It says, "Can the 144,000 communicate by telepathy?" First, uh, you got to understand uh, the foundation of ancient proto-Semitic languages. So ancient proto-Semitic language, when you're talking about ancient Kemetic or ancient Moabite, it's all connected to the alphabetical symmetry of light. So with that being said, you have to deviate yourself from European Albion dialect because it's actually acidic to the body. So when you tap into your natural tongue, that's when it, like I said, it could cause a reverberation on, on your genetics to where it produces more neurons to where you can take in these frequencies to where you can tap into the ability of a, learning how to use telepathy. But like I said, everything is an initiation process. you got to start at the path of Nasu where you're a neophyte. you got to tap into the original uh, teachings and the practices in order to connect with telepathy. But you can't just go into you saying you're 144,000 and you ain't even studied none of these ancient languages and, and using your native tongue. You got to study that stuff first before you can get to the uh, the telepathic aspect of it. But I'll let you build on that. No, you. you I mean, you, you, you build it up. I would say, okay. again, it's, it's about resonance. OK, remember, uh -huh. who's in Bible children spoke of receiving telepathic messages from those beings in a movie, knowing they were able to receive telepathic messages to know where they were supposed to meet at to be able to escape the airplane. Here's what I think people are being challenged with. Now, it's like either you know or you don't know now, okay? Because remember, everything has become allegorized. They've allegorized everything, especially in the spiritual community, the conscious community. 
Mm -hmm. No one wants to deal with the actual possibility of extraterrestrials mm -hmm. <laughs> handling all these affairs that you think you know about. You understand? Because that means not only will you have telepathic communication amongst yourselves, that telepathic communication will be utilized as a channel by other beings mm -hmm. who will be referred to as angels. So if they have to communicate with you, look at it like this. Some, some of y'all are already being communicated with. Some of y'all are already being reached. You're being reached in your dreams. You're being reached by the ringing in your ear. You understand? You're being reached by how you feel when you wake up. Sometimes you got this nausea. Your genetics are already being altered. Mm -hmm. You understand? They're trying to literally, I know we're probably going deep, but they're literally trying to, right, through sleep incubation and other means, mm -hmm. cause for some of you to just activate yourselves. Because mm. it doesn't take some external force to activate you. But that telepathic communication is saying you're learning more about the true sound. And that's why I broke down in the book Rehab about not just the true light, but the true sound. Okay, when you learn about the refraction of sound waves and that in the darkness or when there's less heat present, which is your meditation, sound is able to travel further. Mm. You understand? And you're able to hear more. Oh, listen, if you were to do this experiment, pay attention to what you can hear at 3 p.m. All right? Sit next to your window in your home. Pay attention to what you can hear at 3 p.m. All right? Just listen to all the sounds outside. And then pay attention to the fact that by 12 a.m., okay, that same position, if you will go back and sit in that same position, you will hear sounds louder. Mm -hmm. All right? Take that same science and apply it to the self. When you go in the shadow, all right, or literally in the darkness and meditate and listen and activate the mind's eye, which is your side lens, all right? Side mm -hmm. lens. Listen to it. Silence. When you exercise your own silence, you open up the side, which is your mind, lens. Okay, mm -hmm. your eye, and you mm -hmm. open up your mind's eye. Now you're able to see on a whole different plane. That means you're able to receive information on a whole different plane. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's where telepathy starts. Okay, in your silence. That's why the ones who are closer to being telepathic as human beings, all right, than others are women, mm -hmm. because they're less verbal than we are. And mm -hmm. women already have telepathy active. They might not even know it, but they're very telepathic. They don't have to speak. A room full of them, they don't have to speak to each other. They will all understand what each and every one of them is going through. What they, what, the men will be the only ones waiting on somebody to say something. <laughs> but yeah. you know, women can plot, and you don't even know they plotted. Right. <laughs> they plotted each other, and you just sitting there thinking they on two different sides of the room, mm -hmm. not even looking at each other. But the way that one crosses their legs, one, one grabs the drink a certain way, they have, there's a telepathic communication. You might only think body language, but it's more so the resonance that comes with, for one, you're dealing with another conscious being. Mm-hmm. Are you with me? So there are messages that come off with the tongue, okay, when you're speaking, the messages that come when you're having a body language, and there's a message that comes with just the vibe you're giving off. Look how people say you, bro, you're, you're giving off a certain vibe. Right. It can't lie. It, it, I mean, it can it can be misinterpreted, but it cannot lie. That's right. right. So telepathy is one of the ways that you will be contacted, and you are being contacted, okay? But it's not necessarily just for some pickup. It's for your own good and betterment of your future as human beings. So you don't always need ET to do it. Oh, Mario, phase one is, is talking to you right now. Or Bedell come and speak to you. All right. Or you speak to each other. Or one of you in the crowd come and you do something you speak to. And it changes a chain reaction. You understand? That's what the conversions system was asking about. That happens. And now you could all be standing together. Pay attention to this, this scene that I'm painting for you. You standing together as 144,000. Everybody expecting that you make a particular sound. What if 144,000 of you stood together and didn't make a sound? Mm. What, if that was, what if that was your new sound? That you stood together and didn't make a sound. Do you know if you never seen the elite shit they pants, that on that day they would you would see that, you would smell it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how many of them would shit they pants at one time. Because if something happens, you yeah, you hit the streets and you riot and you protest and you screaming and you're making more noise. All right, but I remember being out there in 2020 when they had the BLM riots and stuff like that, and I was leading. You understand? Know and it was it was nighttime for one of the marches. I said, "Yo, we've been screaming all day." I said, "For the next hour, nobody say anything." I had the megaphone, and we walking through the streets in dead silence. They didn't know what to say. The news reporters standing out there holding their cameras. They don't know what to pick. They don't know who to walk up to. 
They don't even know what that is. Mm-hmm. You understand? So you get 144,000 of you together just to be able to stand near each other and be silent, says you're ready. Mm. You understand? Mm. So that, again, will be able to strengthen your telepathy. We used to have something when I was growing up called the hour of silence, right, in my household. And with that hour of silence, you literally had to be quiet for an hour. You couldn't say anything. So imagine going around a house trying to communicate with your siblings, but you can't talk. All right? Yeah. Strengthening your telepathy. One thing you'll notice is the eyes have a whole way of communicating. Mm-hmm. You communicate with somebody just in their eyes alone. That's how you leak energy talking too much. Exactly. That's how you leak your energy. Exactly. Uh, we're gonna do one more question, then we're gonna um uh one more question. That's how you be that's how I be when you build it with the ether. You be like, yo, yo we're gonna take one more. Let's see. <laughs> Fine. Let's see two more hours. I mean, you know. Let me see what we got. Yeah, we got a lot of people in here. I wasn't expecting this many people to be in here on a Friday night. Hmm. So, uh, let me see. What's your thoughts on the... Uh, I don't know what that is. Is Halal the devil? He's one of them. He's one of them. Halal, go look up H-I-L-A-L. Mm-hmm. You'll find that it means crescent in Arabia or Arabic. Okay which is associated with sin, the moon god. He's one of them, all right? Which is just, again, this is a personification of a disorderly being, mm-hmm. all right? So anybody could be Halal. Anybody could embody Halal. Go watch the movie Devil Conspiracy, all right? Anybody can embody Michael, mm-hmm. okay? Sure. Or be like God, that's what Mikael means. Let me see. I'm a... Throw in one more. He says, "Question: Can you talk about? Okay. Can you talk about Stargazer, Sirius, Andromeda, Vega info?" I wish you would have told what you want to know about it. Um, Stargazers, people who watch the stars, astrologers, um, astronomers. I tell people to look up all the time. I tell people to stargaze because, especially in the shadow hour there's a lot of travel that can be observed mm-hmm. all right, from crafts. I know you don't probably see somebody that was seen in here. All right. And they had a movie that came out called don't look up. And I thought that was interesting because I was mm-hmm. pushing for people to look up because there were people that were in the conscious community were telling people don't look up they mm-hmm. were telling people, only look within. I was so confused about that. I was like, how, how are we the first group of beings? That's what we so conscious. And we don't have any connection with who these people are that our ancestors, we spoke about the Hopi prophecy, uh, they were in contact with extraterrestrials. Facts. They literally say that. You understand? We speak about the Asian Egyptians all the time. They were in contact with extraterrestrials. They literally say that. The Sumerians were in contact with extraterrestrials. They literally say that. You understand? So I tell people to pay attention to the stars. All right? Why? Because you can literally see certain craft. And there's a certain type of awareness that comes, a peak sense of awareness that comes when you finally behold it. And you know what you're looking at. Mm-hmm. And you say, that's not one of us. Meaning that's not a human being driving that craft. Mm-hmm. You understand? Know and they'll let you see. And I've done it for multiple people at a time. And say, look, there it goes. And they were able to see multiple crafts at a time. I've done this in real time. You understand? Know so the point is, if you're a stargazer, you're looking for signs. And a sign could be uh, the alignment of a specific thing. Okay, or constellation. Uh, the sign could also be like in one of these... Uh, episodes where they had the Care Bears when we were growing up. They were talking about somebody that was going around swallowing the stars. Right? They said, the bottom just dropped out the Big Dipper. Okay, you should be able to pay attention to the stars and be like, yo, what, what happened with that constellation over there? That's <laughs> something else you can do. All right? Now, when it comes to Sirius and Andromeda Vega, galaxies or star or star formations, I, I, I don't really know what you want to know other than the fact that there are certain beings that are said to come from there, like you have the Andromedans, all right, who will be the predators in the Alien versus Predator movie. All right. And it's very important that you remember that alien versus predator is a code within itself. All right. Because an alien is an alien. What is a predator? Supposed to be a what? An alien. So why Mm -hmm. would they call one an alien, another a predator? All right. Because the word predator is there. And they were speaking Mm -hmm. about the ones who built the pyramids way before you knew what a pyramid was. That's why they are shown as like the Mayas. You understand who had the pyramids? They had rocks and advanced technology and all this other stuff. Of course, they got to make them look like ants and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Throw you off. But they were melanin-dominant beings. 
know what I'm saying? Andromedans, draconians. You know what I mean? A lot of people think that when you say draconian, you're talking about a dragon or a reptilian. Not always. All right. The one who was supposed to be the draconian princess or one of the leaders was a melanin dominant woman. That's why I tell you to remember reptilians are not inherently evil. Okay. Because human beings have reptilian ancestry, like we were speaking about earlier. Right? Human beings have reptilian ancestry. You have a reptilian brain. You got webs between your fingers. You know what I mean? You got all the, you got the makeup of these reptiles. So I don't really know what you want to know other than the fact that you had the Syrians, all right, or the beings who came from the Syrian star constellation that came down as the normal sapiens. They traveled in arcs, as they called them, and they were mm -hmm. able to teach all the different sciences to the Dogon tribe, all right, and the people of Maui, and teach them how to, you know what I'm saying, track the stars, all right, and learn about interdimensional travel and all these other things. And it's crazy that you said something about uh, alien versus predator because remember in, uh, in the alien versus predator movie, he had the frequency bandwidth of his visible light spectrum when he was looking out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He didn't discard, he didn't kill off anything that was vibrating on green. Everything mm -hmm. that was vibrating on red, he was, uh, it was a terminating energy to it. So yeah. from my perspective, I think that's how nature or and these beings look at certain people who are vibrating on a low frequency. So if you vibrating and you got the red aura around you, you vibrating on the color red, it could be detrimental to you. It could be discarded off the planet because Pops you're not working in connection. Yeah, Pops explained that uh, in the I Am Hotel uh, Temple class. Mm -hmm. He said everybody like in the Independence Day movie, you got all the people that run up to the, you know what I'm saying, the, the ship and say, oh, there's my family, they're my people. You know what I'm saying? But they got blown up to, to Kingdom Come. Right. And, okay, he was saying just because you think that these people are your people don't mean that they are. If you vibrate in red, They'll zap you. Mm -hmm. Don't get near them. You know what I'm saying? They, oh, why would they even need to take you? Like he explained in the Holy Tablets, why do they need to take you anywhere if you if you don't have anything for them? You, you know, know and you know what's crazy about that? A lot of people don't understand the diametrical difference between you know the Elohim and the Nephilim. So uh, this is just you know due to my own independent research. Uh, I, I feel like a lot of these doomsday bonkers that they're building. Is actually preparing for the return of these cryptids, or I I forgot the the book that pops put it in. Um, it shows like a, a underground facility, and they have all these cryptids. And from my perspective, I thought those cryptids, whether if they was uh, genetically grafted uh, beast or uh, dark angels, fallen angel, whatever, mm -hmm. but they came to the surface. Like you ever see the movie uh, Cabin in the Woods? No. Nope. You need to watch that. Watch the movie Cabin in the Woods. They had the puppeteers underground, but the fallen angels or these cryptids were underground, and they mm. brought them to the surface, and they was feeding on humanity as they stayed underground. Mm. So I think that same uh, mythology actually correlates to the timeline that we actually on. So I don't know. That's because it doesn't make any sense for them to just be making a doomsday bunker. Like you can't just. Because mm. I remember Pop said something about. They can't use atomic weapons like that because they almost cracked the earth. Exactly. So what they really so they not hide and what, what they really hide from, why they gotta build them so deep. Cause I think I feel like something is returning to the planet that they know about. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's just my perspective. Yeah, and it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be the devil, it's the devil to them. Mm. It's, it's their op. So that's yeah. Satan to them. God is Satan to the world or to the world leaders. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because anybody that's coming through and say, yo, you got to take all that down, start all that over, that's Revelation chapter 21. And I make all things new. Mm. Anything you had going on, it ain't happening no more. Who else could be able to do that other than, like, they watched the movie Independence Day and Independence Day Resurgence. And remember, real life ain't Hollywood. <laughs> oh, you ain't going to have no Will Smith. None of you can't do shit about what's happening or what's right. going to <laughs> They can't, they know they can't. That's why they got the, that's why they got a doomsday bunker. Right. That's why they got underground cities. They, they try to live as long as they can. They want them last few seconds. Most definitely. Yeah. So yeah. Um, tell them about the books that you got, because we uh we done with the questions right now. Mm -hmm. Um let me put your uh, banner back up. Uh hit the brothers cash app, uh phase one, play for change. He's doing the 144,000 fundraiser. Uh yep. And tell them about the books uh, that you got, the 10 books that you wrote. Righteous. So I think I, started, I think I wrote my first one in 2020 or 2021.
But uh, we got uh, it's just different things that have been broken down. So you got the Why book, you got the uh, Did Jesus Really Die for Our Sins book, you got the Who Knows the Secrets books, which is straight masonry and the secrets thereof. Uh, you got the uh, How to Fight the I don't know if you can say the word on here, but the the virus that they did How to Fight That and Win book, which goes deeper. Uh, you got um the How to Speak Elite book. You have the You Are Light All Right book. OK, those the how to speak elite. You are like all right. And the who knows the secret is like a trilogy of masonry. Right. Mm-hmm. You have the uh, is the computer God book. OK, mm-hmm. that's a lot of breakdowns about the artificial consciousness and what's going to happen with the technology moving forward. Uh, the science of replication, neuroscience, the neural correlates of consciousness uh, is the soul able to be replicated. I speak about all that in there. Um, you have uh, what that? the out of the darkness book. And you have the How to Love Again book, which you spoke about on here. Um, and you have the uh, Rehab book. Okay. Uh, I hope I ain't missed one of them. But either way, it's, it's 10 books all together, right? And, um, yeah, it's, it's, if you want those books, I go – the same thing I've been speaking about on here, I go into those types of things in those books. But it's like, of course, in way much uh, uh, more detail. You know what I'm saying? So if you want those books, uh, you can send your donation to Play for Change, P-L-A-Y. F O R C H A N G E cash out. Send a donation and send your email, and I'll have them all sent to you. They're digital PDF books, very convenient, easy accessible. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I appreciate y'all for that. With the 144,000 fundraiser, yeah. If you go look me up, go look me up. Uh, phase one on Instagram. See what I'm see what I'm doing. See the type of noise he's making. This is not a game. You know what I'm saying? And I was doing this type of stuff with no funds. Like the brother B. Dale spoke about. Some of y'all probably recognize me from the 16 year old Mason teacher's class hidden knowledge video from back in like 2017. You know what I'm saying? So that video wound up going viral. All right. Four years after one of my people who was a part of the organization I had in high school posted it up. All right. So I've been doing this. I ain't nothing. I just started doing, I've been doing this. Since I was like, you find videos of me 10 years old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Out here performing and speaking on behalf of the master teacher, Dr. Melikazi York and, you know, talk about what was going on. So I haven't strayed away and my platform continued to rise. You know what I'm saying? So just remember that people get a little following and they switch up. People get a little following and that's when they decide that they're going to start trying to get into, you know what I'm saying? You got to know the money can come with doing what I'm doing. Right. All you got to do is just sign over and, and what do you say? Sell your soul, which means that just make the music that all these people are telling you to make. You know what I'm saying? Make the music that the labels want you to make. And I have been approached. I've been offered all kinds of stuff. But the point is, I come to the people and say, the people can help. And we're going to continue to hit them. We're going to continue to shut down. We shut down drill music. We did a lot of stuff. You got to really go look into who's speaking right now. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of works. It ain't really something that could be covered in one sitting. All right? Unless I do like a phase one exposed class, and then we can get into it. But other than that, if you want to help me, help me. It's, it's all kind of donations that people have sent. When it comes to the books, you don't have to. It's no specific donation. You can send whatever you want to send. I received a dollar donation. I've seen hundred dollar, thousand dollar, and more. You know what I'm saying? Donation. So if you want to help, I'm just saying, let's all come together and let's get this done. The fundraiser would be ending in April, right? Altogether, we would have raised 144,000, and that's just the goal. And we will be using those funds to activate throughout the rest of 2024. It was a very important year. You know what I'm saying? I think everybody understands that, especially being it's election year. All the stuff they're going to be throwing at you to get you to, you know, what I'm saying, get up and go bold and all. That. You know, we we have the reins in our hands. So if you want to help me, I appreciate you. For those of you who have helped me, thank you. All right. And we're going to keep going. We ain't listening to nobody. have anything else to say. And there's no negativity. All of this is ordained already. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? That's why it'd be a joke. For some people don't even know how far certain things are. They're thinking that something ain't moving because you, dis- you haven't disclosed certain things. We already in motion. You know what I'm saying? This is just saying, help me out. Let's play. And then let's keep going. That's why it's called play for change. Let's play this game and let's keep going and let's win. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Um, but yeah, we had a lot of people in here, here in here tonight. We had about you know 1,300 people in here. So, like I said, uh, support the brother, purchase the books, mm-hmm. and uh, it'll be glad to have you on again. That way, me and you can you know we can uh, uh, come up with something with a you know extensive you know presentation for the public, mm-hmm. whatever topic they that they want to know about. So we'll talk about it some more, but. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming out to, you know, hear the brother speak. And that's the end of the transmission. Peace. Peace.
Where's it at? Help me.